When you hear the name Galileo, what do you think of? An Italian guy dropping stuff off the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Or maybe Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody? Galileo, Galileo. We are all on a first name basis with him, like Elvis and Oprah. And centuries after his death, his name is attached to a galaxy of products. So what's a guy gotta do to leave such an imprint on a culture? Well, he's been called the father of modern physics, even the father of modern science by the likes of Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking, no less. And the United Nations has declared 2009 the International Year of Astronomy, in part to honor the 400th anniversary of Galileo's first use of the telescope as an astronomical instrument. Before that, like most new technologies, it was probably used mostly for porn. You know, I always wanted to be an astronomer, but with my luck, I'd probably get stuck on the day shift. Now, Galileo did not invent astronomy. In fact, it's one of our oldest sciences. Even ancient man recognized patterns in the movements of the stars and built monuments that demonstrate the ability to predict those movements. Nor did Galileo invent the telescope. It first appeared in the Netherlands at least the year before. But what Galileo did in 1609 was to make some improvements to the device and then point it towards the heavens. And what he saw, the phases of Venus, the moons of Jupiter, turned science upside down. Actually, it, it finally said it right. Aristotle was wrong. The Earth is not the center of the universe. And the proof was there for anyone to see just by peering through Galileo's telescope. It was the birth of modern astronomy. And it launched us on a path that we're still blazing today. Two, one, and lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis, the final visit to enhance the vision of Hubble into the deepest grandeur of our universe. In fact, 2009 may be the most exciting year in astronomy since 1609. In May, astronauts of the Space Shuttle Atlantis completed the final upgrades to the Hubble Space Telescope greatly extending the power of that 20-year-old workhorse, which has already peered deeper into space and time than any other telescope. And the European Space Agency just launched two powerful instruments, the infrared telescope Herschel, now the largest telescope in space, and Planck, which will study the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is like a sonogram of the birth of our universe. And that's not all. The hottest thing in planetary science right now is this new telescope just launched in March uh, called Kepler. At UC Berkeley, astronomer Jeff Marcy is working on one of the most thrilling frontiers in science, the discovery of exoplanets, planets circling other stars. Astronomers have discovered nearly 350 exoplanets. So far, only huge gas giants like our own Jupiter have been found. But from its vantage in space, Beyond the atmosphere and the cycle of day and night, Kepler will do something no Earth-based telescope can do. It will be the first telescope ever to be able to find Earth-like planets around other stars. Kepler will survey 100,000 stars minute after minute after minute for three and a half years, monitoring those stars for their brightness. Marcy and his colleagues will be watching for tiny fluctuations in brightness that indicate an Earth-sized planet has passed in front of the star. We don't know how common other Earths are. Do most of the stars in the night sky have Earth-like planets? Or are Earths one in a thousand, one in a million? Who knows? The real message of the International Year of Astronomy is that astronomy is not just for astronomers. At the Chabot Space and Science Center in Oakland, the telescopes are used for research, but every Friday and Saturday night, they serve a different purpose. Two or three hundred people will show up on a weekend to, to look through the telescopes. It's nothing like looking at a picture. You, know, you see these beautiful pictures coming from the Hubble Space Telescope, but they're, they're photographs. It's a completely different experience to actually put your eye up to the telescope and let the light from what you're looking at hit your eye. Since Galileo's time, we've built telescopes and instruments to analyze not just visible light, but infrared and ultraviolet, x-rays and radio waves, because we've realized there is information all around us. 
raining down on us at 186,000 miles per second across a vast spectrum of wavelengths, like a rainbow of channels, each one capable of telling us something different about the universe into which we were born. But you don't have to think about any of that to appreciate the majesty of a starry, starry night. What's your favorite thing to look at through a telescope? Saturn, for sure. It's exquisite to see a little miniature solar system, to see this exquisite cosmic jewelry, the ring. If you look at Saturn with your own eye in the eyepiece, uh, you'll never forget that experience. So during this International Year of Astronomy, why not find out if a local observatory offers public viewing times? Or get your own Galileoscope for only $15. In the very least, step outside on a clear night and remember the words of Freddie Mercury. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see. For Time.com, I'm Brian Mallow.